You are now watching a webinar on the common industry problems with traditional DSPs. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, I'd like to first make introductions so you can get acquainted with everybody here on this webinar. Um, first, we have David Maldo. David, will you please say hi? Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So David is the founder and CEO at Let's Do Video. Um, briefly, to, to explain David's background, David, um, so founder and CEO of Let's Do Video and one of the visual collab collaboration industry's most prolific writers of public content. David assesses product solutions from an IT perspective with an eye for user experience and adoptability. David has a deep and broad knowledge of the industry and its underlying technologies as a result of constant briefings with industry's leading execs and developers. With a deep enough technical base to be relevant to the IT crowd and a writing style that breaks, down, breaks things down for a typical user, David is looking to make Let's Do Video the place for everyone to get the news they need about the continuing video revolution. So thank you, David, for joining us today. Um, next up, we have Seth Tovey. Seth is from Clearline Networks, and he is the AV Design and Engineering Manager. And uh, are you, Seth, where are you located? Uh, we're located in Nashville, Tennessee. That's right. We can hear it. So with over <laughs> 20 years of experience related to all things audio, welcome, Seth. Thank you so much for joining us on this webinar. And right to my left here, we have Zach Flanagan, Head of Direct Channel Sales at Phoenix Audio Technologies. Zach has nearly a decade of experience in the AV industry and in both the integration side as well as the audio endpoints um, here at Phoenix Audio Technologies. So thank you for joining us, Zach. That's a good introduction for me. <laughs> and uh, lastly, my name is Ryan Root. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Phoenix Audio. So now I would like to just give a brief, um, you know, what can you expect in the next 20 to 30 minutes? Um, First, we're going to have David talk. You know, why David's going to share why why he's so passionate about um, audio in this video conferencing space. Um, talk about video conferencing in general. Why great audio is so important. And then we'll have a chance to hear from Seth, um, kind of giving um, a customer story um, about his relationship with Phoenix Audio and how that came about and uh, how it's kind of shaped his business um, in a new direction. Um, lastly, I just want to remind everybody that there is a Q and A section. Um, where you can ask any question you'd like. Um, we'll be sure to either answer those during the webinar, afterwards, or um, you know, if, if we don't have enough time, we'll follow up with you afterwards. So let's go ahead and get started. David, I will hand it off to you. Thanks, I appreciate it. So uh, everyone asks, why is the video guy so excited about talking about audio? I'm known as a video conferencing analyst. My company is Let's Do Video. And any video conferencing analyst will say the same thing. And I'll just get it out of the way. That audio is the most important part of a video experience. And we all say the same thing. If you think about it, you're in a video meeting and the video goes bad or even fails completely, what do you do? You complain, your meeting isn't as productive as it should have been, and you continue the meeting. But if the audio drops out, well, then the meeting's over. But there's, there's more to it than that. Actually, there's two levels beyond that. I think it's more than just failure. There's a problem with bad audio. We know that if there's bad audio, you tune it out, you don't realize you're doing it, but you're straining. Half of your brain is trying to figure out what the person is saying, and half of it is actually able to, to process what's being said, you know, deal with it. So we know that bad audio is a problem, but I think there's even more to it than that. And to explain, I gotta go back into my history in this industry. When I joined this industry about 13, 15 years ago, it was a great time for video conferencing. It was a magical time. I was working at Wayne House Research, uh, an analyst firm that covers business collaboration, and we had video conferencing systems. We can close the door between two rooms and make a call from one room to the other and see each other and hear each other. It was the Jetsons. It was the future. It worked. It was finicky. It was definitely finicky, but it worked. And at the same time, we had this mountain of materials that was coming out, scientific studies talking about the benefits of video. Now, a lot of it was marketing hype, but there was some real science in there. We know that when you meet face-to-face, -face, you're more effective, your message gets through more clearer, you're more convincing, more likely to close a sale, your team is more productive, you get things done quicker, it's less stressful, less straining than an audio-only meeting. There's these lists of benefits. We know for a scientific fact that if you're 
if your teams, if your working teams use this, they'll be happier, meetings will be shorter, they'll be more productive, and your company will, be more, will make more money. And at the same time, we now have the things and they work. This is the magic moment. It's the year of video conferencing. And no one used it. We got people to buy it. We installed it in the offices. We installed it in, in the boardrooms. And a year back later, we said, what do you think of it? And they said, we love it. The calls are amazing. How often did you use it? Twice. Ugh. So I had to figure out. My career has been figuring out this disconnect. We love it. It's amazing. It has all those benefits. We're not using it. So I came up with, over the course of my career, a list of all sorts of problems, complaints that users told me, this is why we're not using video. This is why we're not using video. The packet loss is a problem on our internet and we have ghibli images and things having uh, problems. The lip sync is bad, it's distracting. Uh, the audio is bad with the video conferencing solution we're using. Um, the interoperability is bad. We have one solution in one office and another, we can't call each other. Starting meetings is impossible. We have to have an IT person and you say, oh, what's a big deal? You had to dial an IP address. No, you had to choose a call speed and it was all kinds of, it was hard. The culture, people weren't ready to be on, on video yet. And there's actually, I'm going to take a minute on this because it's interesting. The culture thing, there were two parts of it. One was people weren't ready to be on video yet and they are now. You look on YouTube, it's not just the show-offs, it's not just the extroverts. Everyone's comfortable explaining their lives on video. But we had the culture of video meetings wrong. We had meeting room systems. Does one meeting room need to talk to another meeting room? That doesn't happen. What we need is you have the sales, your sales team is in your meeting room and your best salesperson is across the country and she's not contributing because she's on audio and no one can make out what she's talking about. We figured that culture part out. Now we can connect from our phones, our desktops, our iPads to the meeting rooms. We got the culture. Uh, ease of use. You send me a link, I joined. This is, a, this is a webinar. This is more complicated than, than a, a video conference. I got a link. I clicked it and I joined. Uh, price, complexity, all of these things we fixed. But we're still not at video conferencing nirvana. Now we're close. The market is exploding. The people in the video conferencing industry are all very, 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 very happy and their usage numbers are off the charts. But we're still not completely there yet. When we talk to people in video meetings, they still say it's not as good as face-to-face. -face. I think we lost one of our participants, but I'll just continue. Um, they say, oh yeah, it's great. This person we used to meet on audio and she wasn't able to contribute. I don't think she was getting my message. It felt like a contractor. It didn't feel like a team member. Now she's in our video meeting every week. She's a member of the team. She's in our inside jokes. She's contributing and we're all more productive as a result. Um, but when we flew her in for the team week and she was here, wow, that was a great week. We got so much work done. It was better than video conferencing. Well, why? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's left? Why is, why is in-person still better? Is it because we're two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional? I don't think so. It's the audio. That's the last piece of the puzzle. That's the last thing that's missing from that chart I had behind me. Now, I had bad audio there. We don't have bad audio. We have good audio in video conferencing. We don't have amazing audio. And we need it. Because in real life, in face-to-face, -face, our ears have like superpowers. It's amazing the things that we can do. If you're in a crowded room at a convention or a party or something, and there's 30 conversations going on, I would think it would just be a mess. But I'm able to say, I'm going to listen to what those two are saying. And I can make it out. I don't know how I do it. I'm going to listen to what those two are saying. I can make that out. I don't know how I do it. I'm able to do location pointing with my ears. It's like beam forming technology. Um, there's echo cancellation. I hear my voice directly in my head. It's also coming out in the air and coming back. I don't hear myself twice. That would be so confusing. Somehow my brain does echo cancellation. Um, all of these, and, and there's a list of these superpower things you can do um, that you can't do if you just have one microphone in a room and one speaker because it's just all noise. And that's what's making it a little bit more stressful. When you're sitting in a meeting with, with, with someone and someone starts talking over there, before you even recognize the person's voice, before you even look over to see who it is, you know who's talking because you, you hear where it's coming from, the location thing, all of these different things, um, background noise elimination. 
In real life, we can tune things out. It's harder to tune out the background noise when it's coming over a microphone with the noise of the person talking. It's, it's right in your face. So how do we fix that? And the way we've done it traditionally is with DSPs. DSPs, now I'm a video guy. So the way, I, and you guys know what, everyone watching this webinar probably knows what a DSP is. But for a video guy, I think of it as Photoshop for audio. You give me a bad, low quality picture. If I have someone who's really good at Photoshop, and boy, Photoshop is complicated, they can make it beautiful. Same thing with a DSP. I can give you my audio, whatever it is. You put it through a DSP with a really good DSP programmer and give him 10 hours, two days to get it right, and he can make that room sound beautiful. So yes, we have a solution, and yes, we use it in the high-end rooms. I mean, we can afford to dedicate an IT person to make our boardroom sound beautiful. But I told you, video conferencing is exploding. We're beyond the boardrooms now. We're in all the meeting rooms. We have $2,000 huddle room kits that are in the little rooms, and they all need to sound amazing. And we can't afford expensive DSPs, first of all, the hardware, and we certainly can't afford 20, 30 hours, 10, whatever it is, of programming for each of those rooms. So we have the solution, but we need a way to make it easier. And that's when Ryan and his team told me they had this product, um, the, the Stingray, that kind of answers what I've been asking for. Um, I was like, yes, I'd love to be here and talk about it. So, so that's my um, explanation of why I'm excited about this. And now I'd like to learn more about the Stingray. Yeah, David, thank you for, uh, I think your pitch is brilliant. And I think it's uh, it's simple, makes sense, and it's easy to understand. And uh, that's how I'm built, and I think that's how most uh, end users are built, right? They want uh, simplicity. And uh, here at Phoenix, that's exactly what we're about. So across our entire line, um, you're going to find uh, high quality and simplicity um, paired quite beautifully together. Um, to, to talk on, like, why the Stingray it's such a great product, in my opinion, and quite a few others. Um, you'd have to start with our mission. And our mission um, gets carried across our entire product line, which is uh, something that's easy to use, um, simple to install is key, and then high-quality audio that can fit in any collaboration space. Because as you mentioned, there's a lot more than just boardrooms now, right? They can put – people are putting video everywhere. Um, I mean, we have a customer that uses one of our conference phones in their ambulances for, so they can do video conferencing in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. So talk about even outside of the huddle room, right? It's literally going um, everywhere. Uh, so what we did um, with the Stingray, which is um, my favorite product of ours, um, let's take a look at very briefly – oh, Seth, welcome back. Um, take a look very briefly at um, other DSP companies which have owned the market forever. Um, so if I was to go, and I won't throw anybody under the bus, right, because I think there's definitely a purpose for complicated solutions. Um, but if I go on one of these websites, and I won't say the name specifically, and I look at their DSPs, I literally don't know what I'm looking at or what I would need um, because I'm not a certified audio engineer on that specific line. Um, Imagine being an end user, trying to take a look at your rooms and deciding what you need. Um, it really takes the control and the power out of your decision making and what you want to do in your rooms. Um, so with our device, we have brought um, simplicity and high quality into the room with a DSP, which is, which is quite frankly unheard of. Um, I think it's brilliant uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, David, you talked about the progression of the video conferencing era and how as technology gets better and we get better at doing it, the price comes down and it generally gets more simple, right? And we haven't seen that simplicity come into the DSP market, um, nor have we really seen the prices come down, or I'm sure they have, right? Overall, prices have come down a bit, but it's still very expensive. Um, so what we've done is we've taken the programming out of those rooms, and because our technology has improved, we find conference rooms, small, medium, large, and even some huddle spaces, very easy to do high quality audio in. Um, and using our DSP, we do all of those functions that you talked about that our brain does so effortlessly, and you don't think about it, we do it so you don't have to think about it with the Stingray. Yeah, that, that really like strikes me about the Stingray. You, you know, I cover a lot of audio companies, as I said, I've been getting obsessed with audio. And even your company, you, you basically have two product lines. There's the ease of use consumer facing product lines. I have a Phoenix Spider here and, and you know, touchpad, it's very simple to use, plug and play, USB. 
and that's the consumer side. And then you have your powerhouse side for, for, you know, for the AV geeks, for the, for the audio experts. And that stuff is technical and hard to use and requires programming. And you guys decided to take the, the philosophy of the consumer make it easy side and apply it to a DSP, mm-hmm. which is DSPs aren't for, for users like me. DSPs are for, for the guys who know what they're doing. Um, we usually just figure they're smart. They can figure it out. You made this thing. Uh, you know, I talked about the programming time from the, the demos you shown me. It's not just easier to program. There is no programming. You just set auto cancellation and it reads the room and does it. So that's, yeah. You know, that that's really, I don't think I've seen anything like this in the DSP space. Yeah, it's fantastic. I like to say it's so easy to install the Stingray and understand it and manage it that I can do it. Um, so although I've been in the industry for 10 years, I've been on a, a sales side. So I've been account managing, and now I manage a sales team. Um, so you got to think about my life, which is um, basically making all the complicated stuff simplified so any end user can understand it. Um, and I actually need the simplified version because I don't even understand the complicated version, nor do I have the motivation to do so, right? Because there's other people that get paid in the industry to understand that stuff. It's my job to deliver the simplified message. And with the Stingray, it's very easy to deliver that message. Like, I, I quite literally installed our, our first DSP in our old office just to get my hands dirty and, you know, do it and say that I've done it and understand the product better. Um, and we have a ton of end users that do self-installs. And... Um, and then a lot of end users that don't, they give Seth, which he'll talk about in just, just one minute here, about why it adds value to his business. And I do want to say, like, we are not, um, we're not ignorant here, right? There are uh, training rooms and types of rooms that are very, very complicated, right? And they require all sorts of customizations and different things. And here at Phoenix, we are so happy to bow out of the way if the Stingray is not the right fit. But the majority of rooms are simple. They're just simple conference rooms where they need great audio for video conferencing. And for those rooms, all day long, you can throw the Stingray in there. And uh, from here, I will hand it off to Seth, who will tell you about um, him throwing a Stingray in some rooms. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Stingray, um, I guess, first thing I should talk about is kind of how I found out about them. Um, you know, part of my job is doing tons of research and, and seeing what companies are out there, what their R&D is doing and, and different things like that. And I'm always looking for, um, you know, a bit of edge on the competition. Um, and the easiest way to, you know, gain that edge is by reducing labor. Um, labor is probably the most high priced thing um, you know, that installers are, are selling in a sense. Um, but, you know, the Stingray allows you to go in, get into a customer's site, do your job and be done. It, it takes less than an hour to set the thing up and plug all the cables in. It, it couldn't be simpler. Um, the techs can use an app to set it up on their phone so they don't have to, you know, go out to the van, get a laptop, drag it back in or whatever. Um, it just really takes from an installation side, it couldn't be easier. Now from a programming side, it gets even better. Um, you pretty much plug your microphones in, set the level and their algorithm takes care of everything else. Um, it's just a no brainer if you ask me and it's scalable. Um, so you can start with just a very simple system with a couple microphones and and a Stingray, or you can do a very large room uh, where you can throw in a bunch of Stingrays. Uh, You know, we get bids where we may have as many as 26 microphones in a room um, for panel discussions in some of these large government buildings, and they want to be able to record everything and webcast uh, so that people can tune in. School boards, they do the same thing where They'll have like a Facebook page and all the participants in the county can log in and see what the school board meeting is about. You have to have pristine audio for that. And I tell you, programming 26 microphones to work on a system on a traditional DSP is not an exciting thing to do. Um, <laughs> it takes a long time. Um, it, it's, it's a real pain. Uh, Phoenix Audio basically just makes that so much easier. Um, and then if 
you get into the simple rooms and you're using a traditional DSP, you may have to sit there and EQ those microphones to deal with a, a bad sounding room. Um, you know, as integrators, we're thrown into terrible rooms more times than, than not. Um, and so we have to be able to effectively deal with this while still making a profit. And truly the Stingray is one of those devices that is just killer in all aspects. So um, that's why I like it. Guys? <laughs> that's great, Seth. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, do you, David, do you have anything else you want to, you know, we kind of open this up to a discussion at this point. Um, we might have some Q and A's coming through questions. Um, well, you know, a, a first thought that I have is that the people whose time we're saving, it's very valuable time. It's, it's not like, um, you know, these people are taking care of these problems in their extra time between other things they're doing. This is taking hours and hours and hours of time that could be used on other things. Uh, whether, whether it's an internal resource that's doing it or whether it's an external like Seth that's coming in, you want these people doing other more valuable things than, than spending 20 hours programming something that should be plug-in or that now could be plug-and-play. Um, there's, there's a lot of, it's not just the value of, of saving the money and, and the benefits we talked about of having the, the audio you need to make video conferencing really work, but it's the, the, the value of what these people could be doing with their time instead. Yeah. And we are getting some questions in uh, kind of regarding more around the product and, and it sounds, my guess is like features and things like that. Um, and this wasn't, this webinar wasn't really meant to be like just listing all the features and stuff like that. Um, but to give you like a brief overview that it's a DSP, right? So it, it, it will process your audio. It has, you know, gain control, um, AEC, um, sound cancellation, noise cancellation. Um, you can put microphones in it as a built-in power amplifier. You can do things like sound reinforcement, um, integrate your media, do zoning. Um, it has built-in VoIP, right? It has all these things you would expect from a DSP. Um, and I think what we want... Uh, people to know here is that, um, that it can save you time. Um, for somebody like Seth, who um, wears a lot of different hats, which a lot of people do at different uh, AV integrators, um, it helped him save time um, with his actual programming and so, so he could do other things. And, um, you know, David said something the other day that really struck to me, and I, I don't think he said it today, but uh, something uh, it's about, um, or no, Seth said it, sorry. Um, maybe you did just say it, but it allows him to do his job best, which is get into the customer's site, uh, install the products, and then leave. Um, so this helps the end user as well. So I know there's a lot of end users on, not just integrators. What our product allows them to do is give you high-quality audio and get in and get out quick and leave, which saves you time and saves you money. Um, not only that, this is easy to manage, guys. Uh, you reach the IP address, and you get to manage your own system without paying support fees, um, yearly support costs, and, th and things like that. So... Um, overall, um, the product will do what you expect a DSP to do. If you need additional details and you really want to take a deep dive into that, I'm happy to meet with you um, and go over that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, the, the main objective here is that, that Stingray will make your life more simple and save you time while providing um, high-quality audio. Um, some other questions um, had come in. Um, somebody asked, um, they, uh, they have a specific DSP that's very complicated, and um, they asked about um, if the Stingray would be uh, a good use for these rooms because that other DSP, you know, uh, seemed like it was overkill. Um, and uh, for this one, um, Paul, I will say that, uh, yes, the majority of the business I get is because the DSPs end up being quite overkill, and a lot of times those DSPs and those programming costs and installs, they don't match the current market, which David touched on. A huddle room could cost $2,000, right? So if you have, you know, if you have Microsoft Teams, which you're already paying for, a $1,000 camera, uh, a mini PC, and then we come in with the audio and it's eight grand or 10 grand, it doesn't kind of match the rest of the solution and it gets a bit confusing. So absolutely, um, our DSP would be great for that. And I'd be happy to talk to you offline more about the rooms and kind of right fit, uh, what can work in there. Um, what was that? Did you just have a question up there as well? Let's see here. 
Um, another one that came in, uh, can, ceiling rates over, can ceiling arrays overcome the physics of distance to the mouth? Um, absolutely. So, um, you know, I always say, like, the, if we're not talking about a DSP, my main goal is always to get the microphone as close to the mouth as you can, right? That's always going to help. Um, I think ceiling, rays, ceiling arrays are designed to do so. Um, to take that away. And so we um, work with quite a few different arrays from uh, Sennheiser um, to Shure. Um, even we often integrate with our own um, uh, microphone array, the Condor, which actually has a built-in DSP. Um, so absolutely, yes. Um, and we are happy to be the brains behind those, those arrays. One more question just came in from Paul. Uh, the XLR to terminal block converter. You have a short list of recommended mics. Do you have to use one of those, or can you use a comparable mic? And does this send out phantom power to the mics as well? So, um, yes, um, we do send out phantom power. If you are using the um, mic inputs uh, on the line input side of the Stingray, there's four unique line inputs. Uh, we obviously do not send out phantom power on that side of the, the inputs. Um, you do not have to use our list of microphones. Those are just microphones that we have personally gotten in-house, tested, and certified. Um, what you could do is, one, is let us know the mic you want to use. If we have a way to acquire that, and if that's you sending it to us or us reaching out to the manufacturer, um, we will work as hard as we can to get any of those mics, use them, and test them, and certify them for you um, as well. And we may actually have experience of other people using that those same mics. So by all means, don't feel like you have to use the mics on our website. All right, perfect. All right, well, we are close to the end of this webinar, so I want to respect everybody's time. We know that time is money, and that's one of the advantages of the Stingray, actually. It'll, it'll save you some or make you some, yeah. depending on how you're looking at it. Actually, Brian, I want to answer one more question. One more question okay. came from Mark. Um, Mark, uh, the question, uh, I noticed that many times the problem with the sound system is not the internal programming of the DSP, but the integration with the video and or audio conferencing devices. Can you speak to this? Um, I'm not sure if I can. Let me understand the question. I mean, I, I could try in a little bit from the from the yeah, video please. side. Um, and I, I just changed the background. If people were wanting a little bit more about the product, this page is really great. If you go to it at um, Stingray slash MT700, the URL is there. They scroll down, there's a video with all the features and everything that people were asking for in the questions. Um, but video conferencing for a long time was really its its own animal. It was so hard to get video conferencing to work that the video conferencing developers was really focused on the video and not so much with the integration into traditional audio solutions. So you'd get a video conferencing solution, it would come with its own speaker, its own mic, its own camera, and you were supposed to just sort of use it itself. That wasn't true for all of them. One of the video vendors, um, they, they happened to make a lot of audio equipment, so they're, they're, they worked a little bit nicer with everyone else than, than the others did. But it was a problem, and it's gotten better because when I talk about the explosion of video conferencing, it's not, we're still selling those traditional baked-in proprietary devices, but a lot of the new rooms are cloud-based rooms. Like you'll have something like video, uh, like Zoom that we're using for video, or, or one of its competitors, a cloud video solution, and just regular peripherals, you know, any microphones you want, any um, PC or laptop running the, the software that you want, any camera that you want. So now we're using the, the microphones that we're familiar with, the, the devices that we're familiar with, the speakers that we're familiar with, and it's on Windows devices that we know very well how to deal with the audio settings on those. So I think that'll make it a lot easier for our audio engineers and for our DSPs and for our existing technology to make video conferencing audio play nice with our, with our rooms. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, David. Sorry I didn't understand that question right away, Mark. But yeah, absolutely. We can integrate with just about everybody and we test that doing so. Um, and then last one, Charlie, um, when using the Stingray as a SIP phone, what is the most popular solution for dialing? Um, I would say the most popular solution as of right now would be our Phoenix Connect app, which can run on Apple, Android, Windows. Um, that's free. Um, that app will allow you to dial, um, allow you to mute the room or mute the podium. Uh, microphone, you can uh, room combine and room split, you can company logo it. Um, so there's a bunch of different things. So we developed that for you for dialing. Um, piece, people also integrate ours into other dialers um, and things like that. So um, hopefully Phoenix Connect, right? That's the, the freest version. Um, but by all means, you can integrate it into other controls as well. All right, perfect.
I don't want to take any more of your time, but I just want to let you know you will receive this webinar uh, as a recording. We also post this or upload it directly to YouTube. Um, if you want to learn more about our products um, and solutions, you can visit phnxaudio.com and you can learn more about the Stingray right there. Um, also, you can follow us on social media, so LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, a lot of resources there for you to learn a lot more about our solutions. So thank you, everybody, for attending this webinar, and have a great rest of your day. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.